TF Green International Airport, officially Theodore Francis Green Memorial State Airport, IATA, PVD, ICAO, KPVD, FAA LID, PVD, is a public international airport in Warwick, Rhode Island, United States, 6 miles (9.7 kilometers) south of the state's capital and largest city of Providence. Opened in 1931, the airport was named for former Rhode Island Governor and longtime Senator Theodore Francis Green. Rebuilt in 1996, the renovated main terminal was named for former Rhode Island Governor Bruce Sundlin. It was the first state owned airport in the United States. The Federal Aviation Administration FAA National Plan of Integrated Airport Systems for 2017 to 2021 categorized it as a small hub primary commercial service facility. T. F. Green Airport is a regional airport serving the FAA's New England region in the FAA system plan. The airport is the largest and most active airport among the six operated by the Rhode Island Airport Corporation RIAC. Topic: History. TF Green Airport was dedicated on September 27, 1931, as Hillsgrove State Airport, drawing what was at that time the largest crowd that had attended a public function in the country. In 1933, the Rhode Island State Airport Terminal was built on Airport Road, then called Occupastuxet Road. In 1938, the airport was renamed in honor of Green, who had just been elected to the Senate two years earlier. At the time it had three 3,000-foot concrete runways. The Army Air Force took control from 1942 to 1945, using it for flight training. The February 1947 diagram shows runways 5, 10 and 16 all 4,000 feet long. In April 1951 runway 5 was 5,000 feet and 5R was under construction. A few years later 5R was 5,466 feet, which it remained until extended to 6,466 feet around 1967. The April 1957 OG shows 26 weekday departures, 11 Eastern, 10 American, 4 United and 1 National. Non-stops did not reach beyond Boston and Newark until 1959 when Eastern started a DC-7B non-stop to Washington, which was the longest until United started Cleveland in 1968 and Chicago in 1970 and Eastern started Miami in 1969 and Atlanta in 1970. The first jets were Mohawk back 111s in 1966. President Richard Nixon made a campaign stop at the airport on the night of Friday, November 3, 1972. A crowd of 10,000 watched as Nixon, standing on the steps of Air Force One, urged voters to support Republican candidates Herbert F. Desimone for governor and John Chafee for U.S. Senator. Both lost, though Chafee later won the office in 1976. Air Force One again touched down at TF Green on August 30, 1975, this time carrying President Gerald Ford, en route to a fundraiser in Newport. He was greeted by a crowd of about 1,500 supporters, as well as local politicians including Governor Philip W. Knoll, Senator John O. Pastor, and Providence Mayor Buddy Cianci. Topic Modern era To enhance itself as the lone airport for a metro area of over 1.6 million people, a new terminal was built on Post Road in 1964, replacing the old 1933 terminal along Airport Road. In 1996 this terminal was replaced, expanding to 18 gates, and adding a lower arrival level and an upper departure level. 
In 1997 four gates were added. Airlines added flights to TF Green Airport, including Air Canada, Southwest, SATA International which operated flights to the Azores using an A310-300, and Spirit Airlines. After the September 11 attacks, TF Green Airport, like most airports in the United States, faced a temporarily decrease in passengers and fewer flights from American Airlines which once flew to Chicago O'Hare and Dallas Fort Worth Airport, Spirit, and SATA. Until the 2015 finalization of the merger between American Airlines and U.S. Airways, creating one single licensed carrier under the American Airlines name, the Providence metropolitan area was the largest MSA in the United States not served by American Airlines or any of its subsidiaries. The decrease in service was especially severe to Chicago O'Hare as between both United and American decreased the number of one-way daily seats from nearly a combined 1,400 to today's 225 daily one-way seats. Nine flights of 727, 735, 757 and MD-80 service to today's regional jet use. Since the HNTB designed Bruce Sundland Terminal opened in 1996, TF Green became more congested due to increased traffic and post 9 11 security changes. Renovations followed, including expansion of baggage rooms to accommodate a new inline explosive detection system EDS baggage handling system, expanded security screening checkpoints, more concessions and ticket counters, and expansion of RIAC offices on the second and third floors. Traffic increased to a high of 5.7 million passengers in 2005, while at the same time Boston Logan was handling 25 million passengers. After 2005 airlines started consolidating service at larger airports withdrawing service and reducing frequencies at mid-sized hubs and small-sized hubs. Airports such as TF Green, Jacksonville, Bradley, etc. were affected. The recession and Boston Logan's proximity to the Providence metro area also took its toll on TF Green as numbers decreased to 3.5 million in 2015. In 2017 numbers have grown just shy of 4 million passenger. With the addition of Amazon Air, which includes its own Prime Jets plus DHL and Atlas Air Jets, cargo numbers have increased to nearly £44 million. This will increase with a full year of service from Amazon Air. Amazon moved their cargo service from TF Green to Bradley International Airport as of August 1, 2018. In 2017 the airport had 74,561 aircraft operations, average 204 per days, 50% scheduled commercial, 14% air taxi, 35% general aviation and in 2017, Norwegian Air Shuttle began transatlantic flights to destinations in Europe including Shannon, Cork, and Dublin in the Republic of Ireland, Belfast, Northern Ireland, United Kingdom and Edinburgh, Scotland, United Kingdom, and Bergen, Norway. In 2017, due to a runway expansion, making TF Green's longest runway 8,700 feet 2,700 meters and other economic factors, the airport has seen several wide-body jets and the addition of 17 new non-stop flights in the past year. This doubles the number of destinations served non-stop from TF Green to 34. Cheaper fees at TF Green make it an appealing choice for sports teams and entertainers visiting the area. The National Football League's New England Patriots currently house both of the team's branded Boeing 767 planes at Rhode Island airports, one at TF Green, the official airport of the Patriots and the other at Quonset Point.
Topic: <laughs> Proposed name change. In February 2018, the Rhode Island Airport Corporation formally petitioned the state legislature to change the name of TF Green Airport to Rhode Island International Airport. The RIAC believes the name change both reflects the airport's recent international flight presence and better describes the location it serves. Topic: Facilities. Topic: Terminal. The airport's terminal, named for former Rhode Island Governor Bruce Sundlin, Sundlin died on July 21, 2011, has two concourses, north and south. The South Concourse has eight gates and the North Concourse has 14. Gates 7 and 8 are designed for international arrivals and are directly connected to customs, which is on the lower level of the concourse. The terminal contains a number of stores and restaurants, and a central food court. Runways and apron Theodore Francis Green State Airport covers 1,111 acres 450 hectares at an elevation of 55 feet 17 meters. It has two asphalt runways, 5 23rds is 8,700 by 150 feet 2,652 times 46 meters and 16 34 is 6,081 by 150 feet 1,853 times 46 meters. ILS is available for runways 5, 23, and 34, with runway 5 being certified for CAT 3 instrument landing. The other runways with ILS are certified for CAT I Taxiway Victor was runway 5L, 23R until 2003. Topic. 2017 runway expansion On October 1, 2017, TF Green's runway 523 was officially opened for use at its new expanded length of 8,700 feet. Planning on the project began in the 1990s, and work on the expansion began in 2013. The project included building additional safety measures in the event of airplane overruns, removal of nearby utility poles and trees to clear approach lanes, and moving an entire city park from one side of the airport to the other. Officials are hopeful that the longer runway will attract more longer range non stop flights, such as the international routes that Norwegian Air began flying in 2017, as well as enhance safety for short distance flights, giving pilots more runway to use in the case of poor weather conditions. The runway expansion was desired because, as the Rhode Island Airport Corporation RIAC wrote in 2001, the master plan completely Completed in 1997 failed to envision the tremendous growth that TF Green experienced. The report identified the lack of runway length as a hindrance to range and diversity of service, in particular, emphasizing ability to reach non hub cities, the West Coast, and international locations. Challenges for TF Green in expanding the runway were the residential and commercial developments around it. Many residents opposed the expansion. Opponents noted that while the main runway would bring in an estimated $138 million over 13 years, doing so threatened 204 houses, at least 10 businesses, and large areas of wetlands. Opponents also argued that the runway was less critical to TF Green's success than it was during the peak of passenger travel prior to 9-11 and in the mid-2000s. 
Expansion opponents cited easier access to Boston's Logan International Airport since completion of the Big Dig, which included improvements to Interstate 93, the Massachusetts Turnpike, and building the Ted Williams Tunnel. The availability of bus services between TF Green and Logan Airport, and the introduction of low cost carriers at Logan such as JetBlue, as reasons why the runway expansion was no longer as critical. Despite the opposition, on March 1, 2012, the Rhode Island Airport Corporation was given the go ahead to expand the runway and improve the safety of the secondary runway. The Warwick City Council unanimously voted to approve the expansion, and drop the lawsuit against the RIAC. President Obama signed a bill providing federal funds for the project. It was officially completed on October 1, 2017. In 2017, TF Green was named the official airport of the New England Patriots. Topic: Airlines and destinations. Topic: Passenger Topic International Service TF Green is considered an airport of entry and has a full service U.S. Customs and Border Protection Unit on site. The Rhode Island Airport Corporation expects international service to increase, after the 2017 completion of its main runway expansion, but the airport has seen international service come and go in the past 20 years. As of 2017, airlines are serving a record high number of international destinations, including Canada, the Caribbean, and Western Europe. From 1998 until 2013, TF Green had regular service to Toronto Pearson International Airport first via Air Jazz and then by Air Georgian after 9-11, both did business as express carriers for Air Canada. In the early 90s Leisure Air provided twice-weekly seasonal service to Bermuda. Charters such as North American Air and Buffalo Air handled scheduled charter service to the Azores from the mid-80s to the early 90s. SATA International, now known as Azores Airlines, has recently resumed seasonal service to the Azores, having previously offered service until 2010. In 2015, service was announced to Frankfurt, Germany by Condor and Praia, in the Cape Verde Islands, by TACV. The Condor service to Frankfurt marked the first non-stop route to mainland Europe from Providence, however, the flight was later suspended for unspecified reasons. February 6, 2017, USA Today announced that Norwegian Air had selected Providence's TF Green Airport as its base for flights to Europe. Norwegian Air Shuttle now operates from Providence using new Boeing 737 MAX planes for its service to cities in Western Europe. The official announcements were made February 23, 2017, with flights starting to Belfast, Cork, Dublin, Edinburgh, and Shannon. Topic: Statistics. <laughs> <laughs> Topic Top Destinations Topic Annual Traffic Topic Ground Transportation Topic Commuter Rail 
The MBTA commuter rail service to and from downtown Providence and Boston commenced on December 6, 2010, and was expanded on November 14, 2011. Service was expanded south to Wickford Junction in April 2012. There are 10 weekday trains to Wickford Junction and 10 to Providence, most of which continue on to Boston with local stops along the way. Travel time to South Station in Boston is about 85 minutes, while the travel times to both Providence and to Wickford Junction are about 15 minutes. Amtrak has formally stated they will not stop at the station for the foreseeable future citing a lack of economical feasibility, however, a long-term proposal to reroute and modernize Amtrak's Northeast Corridor service would include a stop at the station. <laughs> Road TF Green Airport has direct access to I-95 via the TF Green Airport Connector Road, a 1.1-mile freeway. The airport is served by major car rental companies as well as by local taxi and limousine services. Bus. The Rhode Island Public Transit Authority offers public bus transportation to and from the cities of Providence Kennedy Plaza in downtown Providence and Newport. In particular, the number one bus goes to Kennedy Plaza by way of Eddy Street stopping at Rhode Island Hospital and takes about 35 minutes. The number one bus continues through to the east side of Providence down Hope Street and into Portucket via East Avenue. The number 14 B Plaza and takes approximately 20 to 25 minutes via Interstate 95. It also connects to Newport, Narragansett, and East Greenwich. The number 20 bus goes to by way of Elmwood and Roger Williams Park and Zoo, and takes approximately 40 minutes. The No. 66 Uri, Gailey via I-95. <laughs> Intermodal station An intermodal station, completed in October 2010, includes an elevated walkway to the terminal, a rental car garage, and commuter rail parking. <laughs> Accidents and incidents Topic. 1999 runway incursion On December 6, 1999, at approximately 8:35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, a runway incursion occurred involving United Airlines Flight 1448, a Boeing 757, and FedEx Express Flight 1662, a Boeing 727, on runway 5R 23L. Shortly after landing on runway 5R, United 1448 was instructed by the air traffic control tower to taxi to the gate, part of the instructions including crossing runway 16. Due to the low visibility conditions that night, the pilots became disoriented and turned down the wrong taxiway, which led them back towards the active runway they had just arrived on. The tower controller, unaware of United's mistake, cleared FedEx 1662 for takeoff on runway 5R. United 1448 then confirmed with the controller that they should cross the runway in front of them, neither party aware that they were in fact not near runway 16, and the aircraft continued moving towards runway 5R, 23L. 
United 1448, sounding confused, then radioed that they were near taxiway Kilo, and as they re-entered runway 5R, 23L, reported that, "...somebody just took off," overhead, referring to FedEx 1662 that had indeed just become airborne in very close proximity to the United aircraft. However, the controller appeared not to take this seriously, stating, "'You shouldn't be anywhere near Kilo,' and advised the United 1448 crew to hold position. United 1448 informed the tower that they were now on an active runway, which they mistakenly believed to be 23R, 5L inactive at the time. A moment later the pilot corrected himself, stating that they were on 5R, 23L. United 1448's crew was told again to stand by, so the aircraft remained idle at the intersection of the active runway, while the controller cleared Metrojet 2998 for takeoff on the same runway. The United 1448 pilot immediately interjected to insist that the plane was on the active runway, which the controller belligerently denied, saying it was not an active runway. Meanwhile, the Metrojet pilot, having heard the exchange, realized there was confusion over the whereabouts of United 1448 and refused the takeoff clearance, stating, we're staying clear of all runways until we figure this out." Despite all this confusion, the controller again cleared Metrojet 2998 for takeoff on runway 5R. They again refused to accept the clearance for takeoff until the United 1448 was confirmed to have arrived at the gate. Once United 1448 was confirmed to be at the gate, Metrojet 2998 finally departed on runway 5R. The U.S. Airways crew operating Flight 2998 were praised by a U.S. Air spokesperson for their actions of avoiding a near disaster. An investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board followed and while no fault was assigned to the controller, she was required to undergo retraining before returning to service. The pilots were debriefed by United, received additional training and were returned to service. Part of the confusion was due to United 1448's inability to correctly identify the runway they were on. During the radio exchanges, United 1448 refers to 23L, 5R as 23R, 5L and vice versa. Runway 23R, 5L has been closed since this incident and is now taxiway V. Topic: 2007 CRJ accident. On December 16, 2007, Air Wisconsin US Airways Express Flight 3758, a CRJ-200 arriving from Philadelphia, departed the left side of runway 5 after a hard landing by an unstabilized approach. Although the aircraft sustained substantial damage, none of the 31 passengers and crew aboard were injured. Topic. See also Rhode Island World War II Army Airfields List of Class C airports in the United States